There are some very serious things that are in this rule package that I think we should be debating, but instead we are fighting again for women's right to choose something, and this time is whether she, how she covers herself and the interpretation of someone who has no background in fashion, because again, it is an, and this isn't a shot, it's inappropriate to wear sequins before five o'clock telling me that I can't wear a crispy, good St. John sweater if it has too many buttons. No, this is not middle school. This is not children playing and talking about dress codes. That's Missouri State House of Representatives. And they started the new session, so they started off with a bang, talking about a dress code, specifically for women, because you know, you, uh, they, they, you know they're gonna wall out unless you let them know how to dress. Uh, most of the women, of course, as you saw also the woman behind her, they're all frustrated by this entire thing as she speaks truth. That woman speaking there, her name is Rachel Prouty, State Senator Rachel Prouty there. Uh, we're gonna get to more of her speech, but this is what these new imposed rules look like before she jumps back in. While previous rules said that dresses or skirts or slacks worn with a blazer or, uh, or sweater and appropriate dress shoes or boots were allowed to be worn by female lawmakers, Representative Ann Kelly, Republican, one of the co-sponsors of this bill, said on Wednesday that women needed to wear jackets on the floor as it is, quote, it is essential to always maintain a formal and professional atmosphere. Okay, uh, so this uh, debate originated in last year's session. I guess they were trying to squeeze that in there. What some people felt that it was uh, only a select few female legislators that weren't dressing up to their standards and everything. So let's go back and hear from Representative or uh, State Senator Prouty talking about how horrible this is. Let's let her say more. I want you all to pay particular attention because there's gonna be times on this floor where there are things that should not require debate and comment. I contend that these are one of these things. I spend $1,200 on a suit and I can't wear it in the people's house because someone who doesn't have the range tells me that it's inappropriate. That's not why any of us were elected, Mr. Speaker, none of us. I urge us to vote no on this because it's ridiculous. And also, congratulations, I'll keep that to myself, to any of us who may be with child. Um, you surely don't have enough or have the money off the salary that we make to go buy a bunch of, of new clothes or tailored clothes. And I hope that you're able to continue to wear your cardigan um, and vote on behalf of the people who sent you here. Again, this is what they're discussing. Uh, I would uh, ask anyone that lives in Missouri as they voted for folks, as their local uh, officials, what they voted for why they voted for a certain folks. Was it because they said, you know what? I took a glance at the state live feed of the House proceedings and the, and the state Senate proceedings. And you know, what? I saw a woman's arm and I said, oh my God, these people cannot be serious. I get the feeling about zero people voted based off of that, but these legislators are doing it for that reason. There's more to this, but uh, yes, uh, you've had plenty of jobs some professional ones as well. Have you had this type of dress code uh, rules put in place on you? No, I haven't had a dress code since high school, since junior high and high school. And even then it was it was pretty lenient, you know. I guess this what I'm wearing now isn't considered professional because it's just a dress with no jacket over it. You know, Damn. this is just an example of Republicans not having anything legitimate to talk about, right? This is what they do. And it's mentally exhausting for people. And that's what they want, right? They waste people's time and they waste people's tax dollars. They alienate and they infuriate entire demographics of people, in this case, women. And they create problems out of nothing, and then they pretend to solve the problems that they yeah. created. It's, it's really tired. Yeah, you know what's funny is that the older I get, the more I understand the need for a dress code, right? <laughs> just, the, just the general idea that you don't show up to a place that you're trying to work, collaborate, get stuff done, extra schlubby. Like, we don't want to see you in your pajamas <laughs> and flip flops in our professional environment. Like, that's, that's it though. Like, as long as you don't look like a schlub, and obviously none of these women, we're planning on doing that and like enforcing like these weird button rules is, is weird. But like while I understand the need for a professional decorum in your appearance and you want to feel like you're doing something and you, you know, you at least took the time to put some kind of adult clothes on for the for the moment, like this strict enforcement is is kind of ridiculous. It's craziness. I, I would like to know the actual uh, motivations behind it. Cuz there's something, it's not because they see a woman's arms and go, oh my God, um, she may not be able to read <laughs> I this I wish bill. someone would try to count my buttons and tell me it's the wrong number of buttons. Like how would that conversation <laughs> even go? I can't imagine. People have this conversation with their parents when they're 
13, 14 years old. When you're 13 years old, yep. I that's mean, that, I think that's the point when it kind of stops. It doesn't happen after that, yeah. Yeah, it's well, crazy. Man, I'll, I'll say this about dress codes. When when I was younger, because you know my mom's a, a Haitian immigrant, like anytime <laughs> I wear sneakers to like a party, I'm talking about like sixth, seventh grade, like she was like, you're clearly not dressed up. You're not wearing shiny shoes right now. <laughs> you know, like that was like a thing. It's like, no, mom, like no kid in the sixth and seventh grade is gonna wear church shoes to a birthday party. That's not a thing. But you, these were literal conversations that we would have. Um, one more thing before we go to the more other arguments that happened, because there was more juiciness that happened on the floor over this whole thing. When I went to DC, I've been there multiple times, but then I just kind of sat around and observed. The DC folks in the Capitol mm. area and legislators and all that stuff, staffers, representatives, officials. The, the I was like, I think there's like a dress code the other way. 97% of the women were walking around in these no patterns, but it was plain dresses that were about knee high, but all were arm were sleeveless. Every one of them. I was like, this is really weird. It's like this. It's like a standard dress code, almost like an you know unofficial dress code. Maybe it's just a professional look. I don't know how they would try to find a way to regulate that when it comes to being the normal way people do stuff. I don't know if there's something about Missouri or who knows. It's, it's probably not as many state. equinoxes in Missouri, mm -hmm. man. It, those women in D.C. are jacked. JR, they gotta show off. You need nice arms guns. for a sleepless get up, yeah. Well, uh, another representative <laughs> you gotta though. Your, your triceps. <laughs> you gotta work on them first. Another representative though, Ashley on own. She had a, a back and forth uh, with Ann Kelly on the house floor of this whole thing. This is back in Missouri again. Let's watch this. This was fun. You know what it feels like to have a bunch of men in this room looking at your top, trying to decide whether it's appropriate or not? Are we going to have um, Dana be checking our our um, tags for whether it's a, a knit blend or a polyester blend or the silk count? I mean, this is this is ridiculous, lady. You're right. It is ridiculous. It is absolutely. So why are you doing it? That we even have to talk about it on the House floor. I agree. In so why did you bring it up? Chamber. Why should we talk about something like this? It is absolutely ridiculous. You, you would think, brought this you to the think, floor, lady. You, you tell think, me. You would think that all you would have to do is say dress professionally and women could handle it. You would think elected would officials think. could handle that. You would think, but no, we're, we're walking men, around here in sequins and velveteen men, to the lady's point. So what is appropriate and why do you get to decide? We need to get over the sequence. That's ridiculous. I'm not sure this other lady's point about why are we talking about this? You brought it up, crazy lady. You brought this whole thing up. I, I, I can always talk about this. What you, more, more about this back and forth and this discussion about why they're talking about this and why are we doing this? You did it though. Professionalism. I will never be over the sequins. I will say that much. I will never be over the sequins. But it's, you know, all of this. It's really insulting to the members that these people have to serve with, right? People who ran really expensive and exhausting and like time intensive political campaigns. They had political staffers who helped them get elected so that they could be there to serve their constituents, right? They made promises that I'm sure they would love to keep to those constituents, but they won't be able to get anything done if they're talking about dress codes, right? This is just typical Republican obstructionism. And I don't know why it's tolerated and legitimized. It's gonna make us all crazy. Well, we're already there, that's for sure. Uh, if you guys ever looked at uh, Jim Jordan in uh, the house, my man wears a jacket about 2% of the time. Always has his what jacket. What is he normally, on. just no no jacket? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. right, yeah. The, the do, you, do you guys remember what uh, Kristen um, Cinema was wearing when she did yeah. the sassy? Yeah. Oh yeah, we all remember. Marjorie Taylor <laughs> Green never has a sleeve on, you know, it's- it's stupid. It's not professional it's is the problem. Uh, so one other thing though, so so by the way, um, 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 oh, and also anytime politicians do photo ops, it could be Democratic, uh, Republican, doesn't matter. When If they go to the border, sleeves have to be rolled up on, this, on the suit, uh, on the dress suit. Because that looks better for the photo op. We know this, are they suddenly not professional? No, but this, these are all cues to show something else. But there was a bit of a compromise. Maybe you guys can relax on the sequence now. Let's go to graphic three here, because the State House <laughs> eventually did approve a modified version of Kelly's proposal. Well, she doesn't know why they're talking about it, which allows for cardigans as well as jackets, but it still requires women's arms <laughs> to be concealed. <laughs> I, <yeah. sighs> That's the state of the Missouri uh, um, legislators. So you can imagine the next thing that they'll be talking about as, uh, as they go into their session to go through their unprofessional look of uh, their house. Um,
Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe someone. The next step is to some. Some of the women here need to propose or in, uh, uh, introduce a bill here that uh, makes sure that men. I don't know, man. <laughs> shave. It's something because yeah. nobody wants to see a scruffy old dude with yeah, wires just, and, and hairs everywhere. I just don't understand this gun show provision, man. They gotta show respect to the to the gun show, guys. Come on, man. <laughs> Not at all. I'm just looking at Jr. Like what goes on in Missouri? <laughs> Anytime something about Missouri comes up, I think about Jr. Oh, why is like, this? Huh? Why what? is this? I mean, I was there a long time ago. I don't know. You're, oh, you're so the, you're the first thing I think of when Missouri. I think of Missouri. So take that how you will, but that's Jr. You're, you're in my disavowing head. your your state. You're just like, why is this? You can't understand why people would associate you with it. I I, I love my family that still lives there. Uh, I haven't been to <laughs> Missouri since 1996. <laughs> just oh, wow. I was there this year or last oh, year. Lord. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe things have changed. I should go back and visit all my St. Louis folks. Uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, I'm <laughs> glad you're surviving. Jr. said shout out, but I won't see you. Hope you're doing all right. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, Jr. So those are super fun. But you also get. Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.